The semi-conservative model of DNA replication involves the concept that each of the two DNA strands is a template for new DNA synthesis. Synthesis begins at the three prime end of a template strand. An enzyme known as DNA polymerase selects the precursor nucleotide that can form a complementary base pair with the nucleotide on the template strand. The DNA polymerase then catalyzes the formation of a phosphodiester bond between the 3' prime end of the new strand and the 5' prime phosphate of the precursor base. The formation of the bond results in the release of two phosphates from the precursor. This process is repeated as the DNA polymerase moves down the template in the 3' prime to 5' prime direction. During DNA synthesis, many polymerases also act as proofreaders to detect errors in base pair formation. If an error occurs, the polymerase can move back and catalyze the removal of the incorrect nucleotide from the end of the new strand. The polymerase then attaches the correct base and continues with the process of synthesis. During replication, DNA helicase unwinds a double-stranded DNA to expose the two single-stranded template strands. Proteins known as single-strand DNA binding proteins, or SSBs, stabilize the strands. Since the template strands are anti-parallel and new DNA is made in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, the process of chain elongation occurs differently on the two strands. For example, let's look at the replication fork in an E. coli chromosome. First, DNA primase synthesizes a short RNA primer in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Next, DNA polymerase 3 adds DNA nucleotides to the RNA primer in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This new DNA is called the leading strand because it is being made in the same direction as the movement of the replication fork. On the top template strand, DNA primase synthesizes a short RNA primer in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Then, DNA polymerase 3 adds DNA nucleotides to the RNA primer in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. This new DNA is called the lagging strand because it is being made in the opposite direction as the movement of the replication fork. The short segment of DNA produced along the top template strand is called an Okazaki fragment. Meanwhile, new nucleotides are added to the leading strand so that the leading strand is synthesized continuously. On the lagging strand template, however, replication can only proceed in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. For DNA replication to continue on that strand, a new RNA primer is synthesized by primase near the replication fork. The primer is then elongated by the action of DNA polymerase 3 to produce a second Okazaki fragment. Thus, the lagging strand is synthesized discontinuously, producing Okazaki fragments separated by gaps. Even as synthesis of a new Okazaki fragment begins, the first two Okazaki fragments are joined together into a continuous strand. First, another DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase 1, removes the RNA primer and replaces it with DNA. After the primer nucleotides have been replaced, a single-stranded gap still exists between adjacent nucleotides. An enzyme known as DNA ligase closes these gaps. The action of DNA ligase produces a longer, continuous DNA strand. The process repeats as the DNA continues to unwind. Because one new DNA strand is synthesized continuously and the other is synthesized discontinuously, 
This model is called the semi-discontinuous model for DNA synthesis. Subscribe to my YouTube channel The BioWay on YouTube and press the bell icon so that you will never miss another update from my channel. Thank you.